So I want to clue some of y'all in who are hardcore fans who listen intently and who are all about C4CW casting 495 celebrities worldwide. I'm talking about true fans, not untrue fans. I'm one Sir Grove. Today, midday, this afternoon, this evening, tonight, depending on wherever you are in the parallax view of the multiverse, I'm talking about subliminals. Now, I can't give any kind of legal, business, financial, medical advice. I am simply sharing with you that I have used, as a matter of record, as a matter of fact, subliminal programs. I have induced myself over time with subliminal programming. I found out a long time ago, before I was in college, about uh, a uh, science known as, and it's not pseudoscience, this is actual, real, factual science. At some time in my early adulthood, reading some books uh, at the public library back on the West Coast, That's my country voice, because I'm from a little town. Little country town. Uh, I uh, I found out about this uh, concept known as Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP. And uh, Neuro Linguistic Programming immediately intrigued me. I thought, wow, this is amazing. So my buddies and I, my studious, scholarly, nerdy, geeky buddies at the time, It opened up a whole new world to us because we saw the applicability of NLP to become a master actor, to live a different life under a subliminal program of your own. In other words, you could create alter egos, different personalities, different personas, a different you. Again, I'm not asking anyone to partake of any of the information that I'm about to impart. <clears throat> Sorry, I belched. And I do I do apologize as a matter of uh, you know, just being just being polite. So <clears throat> as opposed to impolite. So neurolinguistic programming, NLP. Uh caveat. It is a real science. Do not do what I am about to share with you. I am just simply saying I did it as a matter of experimentation. And I experimented on myself. I cannot tell you to induce yourself using subliminal programs. I mean, I suppose I could, but I'm not going to. Um, Listen at your own risk. And I am not responsible should you use subliminal programs because I am not telling you or anyone in any way, shape, or form to do what I have done. So let's get to it. So in the field of neuro-linguistic programming, I've read myriad books on the subject because I just wanted to know the truth. Does it work? Is it for real? Is it, is it pseudoscience or is it science? Well, as it turns out, it is absolutely science. And I was able to, I was able to conclude that a long time ago. I, I knew decades ago that NLP was for real. I just didn't know how powerful it actually was. I mean, I knew it was powerful, but I just didn't have the experience yet at that time. So let's flash forward some 30 years down the road. That's right. I was reading about NLP when I was very young, just as a young man or young woman is fascinated with magic and wants to maybe become a magician or maybe just study magic, the art of illusion, master of theatrical stage play. So I'll share with you what I what I found today when I was searching for subliminal uh, programs on YouTube. While searching for subliminal programs on YouTube, uh, 
I Google searched subliminal programs and a video pops up on YouTube and it happens to be a video from the official CIA.gov website. And I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. And it has the static image of an image that I remember from research prior, from previous research. I thought, oh yeah, I've seen that static image before for another video that I watched on the history of CIA. Well, it wasn't really the history of CIA, but it was an old CIA archive uh, archived video where cameras went behind the agency back in like the 1980s. And someone, a journalist at the time, was allowed to go around and videotape some of the different spaces uh, at the like old headquarters building and like some of the different like less sensitive areas of CIA. So before the 1990s, when there was a presentation that uh, broadcast that was called Inside the CIA, which was supposed to be for the first time ever, kind of sort of an expose behind the scenes look at what goes on inside CIA. That was a more modern version. And I don't know why they say it's for the first time ever, because there's the older, <laughs> there's there's the older presentation, and I don't think it's the same journalist. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's not the same journalist. But for whatever reason, the person who, or the people who did the more modern inside the CIA, they clearly say at the beginning that for the first time ever, the agency was opening its doors to different areas that had never before been seen. And I, and I guess what they're saying is that there are different areas uh, and spaces within CIA that had never been shown before. Which I guess does make sense because in, in an earlier video presentation, they didn't show what that more modern what that more modern presentation showed. And you can see inside the CIA on Google, you just go to Google and type inside CIA and it'll bring up that presentation from the 1990s. Well, I recently in the past couple of years watched an older video that delves into CIA behind the scenes and shows some of the different work that was going on. Um, at the agency back in the 1980s. And it's pretty campy. The video's kind of grainy. It's definitely eye-opening, though. It shows it's, it shows some stuff that if you've, if you've followed agency lore and you've read up and studied up as an outsider, uh, it's stuff that you probably already know. It's not really... It's, it's not too revealing, but it does show some stuff that's really interesting that does shed some light on what goes on behind the scenes. Well... So that presentation, there's a static image for it that happens to be the static image for a, for a file that relates to research that was done in 1994. Well, it was prior to 1994, but it's a publication that was released. So, any, so, so in other words, fo follow me on this. So I go to YouTube today to look up subliminal programs. And it brings up a static image. I know I said this, but I'm going to clarify it for anyone you know who wants clarity. Go to Google. I'm like, subliminal programs, videos, images. And it brings up this video from CIA.gov. And I thought, wait a second. I've seen that video before. Not that particular video, but I've seen that static image. That static image to this video that I'm looking at is to that presentation that shows CIA back in the 1980s, like a behind the scenes of CIA in the 1980s. I thought, what does this have to do with subliminal programming? So it brings up, it brings up this uh, CIA.gov uh, publication that is dated uh, 18 September 1995 from CIA.gov's library. And the title of this publication, this document, is The Operational Potential of Subliminal Perception. The Operational Potential of Subliminal Perception. Right from the CIA website, CIA.gov. And it says this, it was previously secret. It was approved for release in 1994. 
CIA historical review program, it goes on again. The operational potential of subliminal perception by Richard Gafford. Now I'm going to count the number of paragraphs for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, small one, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Approximately nineteen. And then in the footnotes it says one. For specifications and data, see Handbook of Experimental Psychology, S is in Sierra, dot S is in Sierra, dot Stevens. And uh, it looks like there was, uh, from Twitter, it says, quote, We don't know about you, but there's something about the underdog that inspires us. Oh, this is about the Nationals, the, the, the Astros. So that's recent. Okay, but this document from 1995, check this out. Listen to this. It says, this is paragraph number two. In the most sensational of these popularized experiments, an increase in popcorn sales in New Jersey in a New Jersey movie theater is said to have been stimulated by subliminal interruptions of the feature film with an advertisement urging the patrons to buy popcorn. The exposure time used a small fraction of a second was too brief for conscious discrimination by an observer absorbed in the film, but presumably long enough to have some stimulating effect. The advertising men who are currently interested in this phenomenon as a sales technique argue that the short duration stimulus appeals to a positive motive, for example, an appetite for popcorn, without arousing the rational conscious sales resistance of the individual based on perhaps the desire to save money or lose weight. Now listen, that's a lot of words. It's wordy. It pretty much makes sense, though, if you listen to it carefully. And that's what I was told by a teacher of mine when I was in fourth grade. I had a fourth grade teacher. For whatever reason, they taught us this stuff. They talked about subliminal messages and advertising. And we, we heard about this anecdote about the movie theater and different experiments with with patrons at movie theaters. I don't know why our teacher went into this information, but in our school district, there there was a time when for like two semesters, they talked about all these different things, about like subliminal messages and all this kind of stuff. And we'll talk about that later. A, A lot of people I know who I grew up with, we wonder to this day why there were these two semesters where... They talked about hypnosis and subliminal messages and things like this as if it were part of the curriculum. It was it was really bizarre. And and as adults, kind of like the movie It, we as a group of, of friends and colleagues from childhood, we think back and then we were like, yeah, that's right. We were in that class. And they were like, for the next like semester, well, it wasn't semesters, but I'm saying like quarter basically back then. And this is in grade school, fourth grade. We're like, oh, yeah, I Mr. Such and Such's class. We went over all those different topics for about like meditation and all this kind of stuff. We were fourth graders, okay? Fourth graders at the time. So to this day, we're trying to figure out like why that was part of our curriculum and why they had us doing all this weird stuff. But we'll talk about that at a later time. Let's just talk about subliminals today. Okay. So then it goes on in... In this, uh, in this body, in this body of body of knowledge here, paragraph one. That was paragraph two. Then three, then four, and then five. In paragraph five, from the top down, it says, "Quote: The operational potential of other techniques for stimulating a person to take a specific controlled action." without his being aware of the stimulus or the source of stimulation, has in the past caught the attention of imaginative intelligence officers. Interest in the operational potential of subliminal perception has precedent in serious consideration of the techniques of hypnosis, extrasensory perception, and various forms of conditioning. By each of these 
techniques. It has been demonstrating certain into sorry, it has been demonstrated certain individuals can at certain times and under certain circumstances be influenced to act abnormally without awareness of the influence or at least without antagonism. So basically they're talking about MK Ultra. And it's been kind of summarized and watered down. They don't go on to say that someone can be programmed to assassinate a foreign leader or a foreign target enemy of America without his or her knowledge. But basically that as rational adults who are competent and who have just heard what I have shared from this document that comes from CIA that stated 1994 that for whatever reason is linked to a video on YouTube, but it isn't really a video. It's a static image of a video from CIA, which is really interesting. So then it goes on to say, after careful research on each of these methods, however, it has become apparent that although they occasionally produce dramatic results, their lack of reliability and their requirement for extremely precise controls to obtain the desired effect have limited their operational utility to a very few specialized instances, situations where just the right persons can be put together at just the right moment under closely controlled circumstances. The primary danger observed in connection with this unreliability is that of a, quote, flashback of inadvertently producing just the opposite effect to that desired. Subliminal perception as a practical control or persuasion technique is prone to the same difficulties. Then it goes on to say, there are four principal categories of behavior without awareness. The individual may be unaware of, A, his behavior itself. He may be whispering without realizing he is whispering, or he may be moving into a trap without knowing that the trap is there. A special case here is of normal behavior in which the individual fails to realize what he is doing because his normal awareness and self-control have been interrupted by disturbing agents such as fear, anxiety, illness, drugs, or hypnotic suggestion. B, the relation of his behavior to some stimulus. The individual may be unaware of the fact that his interrogator is influencing his interrogator is influencing his interrogator is influencing him by saying quote right after certain statements and by remaining non-committal after others. The process called quote operant conditioning falls into this category. C. The stimulus itself because of its slight impact. Because of its slight in impact. The individual may be unaware of a very faint sound or a quick flash of light, unaware in the sense that he lacks the usual visual sensations. The usual visual sensations. Okay. Subliminal perception falls into this category. Then it goes on to say, D, the precise nature of of the stimulus as well as its relations to his behavior because of inattention. The individual may be aware of vague sensations, but he is not aware either of the source or of the significant content of the stimulation. Although his behavior may change in accordance with changes in the stimulus, this category includes a great deal of perceptual activity affecting ordinary social behavior. A person is often unaware of the specific cues and clues to which he is reacting, not because the stimulus is insufficient to reach the consciousness, but because the effort to be fully aware of all the cues of the time would create too great a cognitive strain. That's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Are folks uh, absorbing this information? All right. Well, let's take it one step further. Let me share some information with you in addition to what you have just heard. So what's interesting is on YouTube, there is a, there is a series of videos 
by a company or organization or group called mindpersuasion.com. Mindpersuasion.com. This upload here is from co-creators. And some time ago, I found that co-creators, co-creators has uploaded many of these different mind persuasion, mindpersuasion.com videos. For example, I'm looking at one from four years ago. This is by mindpersuasion.com. Uploaded by, uploaded by an entity, a group, organization, or a person going by co-creators. So one of these, as there are dozens of them, one of them is called Brain Clear. Ramping sounds, noise, and isochronic tones. Brain Clear Ramping sounds, noise, and isochronic tones. And it says here, this is designed to clear your mind of all nagging voices, doubt, remnant, reptilian, and demon presences, and all other unwanted entities and thought forms organic or entity created. Now listen, I know that might sound a little outrageous, but some of this stuff is a little bit more down to earth. Some of it is a little out there, depending on your perception and your view and your take of it. This one is called Master of Time. Control the flow of time faster or slower. It says here, subliminal message. I am the master of my time. I slow down time when I'm having fun. I speed up time when I'm bored. Time obeys my thoughts. I control the flow of time. I stretch out happy events. Time obeys my wishes. Time obeys my commands. I maximize my time. I exist between the seconds when I want. I fly past hours when I want. I create lulls in time when I'm happy. And it goes on. I consciously control how fast my brain operates. Okay? So that's another example. Then it gets into telekinesis. Telekinesis. Move objects with your mind. Again, co-creators has updated these videos from mindpersuasion.com. So for anyone who's still trying to put it together, there is a series of videos by a URL. I don't know if it's a company, if it's an individual, if it's an organization, but it's called mindpersuasion.com. And then there's an uploader who goes by the name co-creators with 42.1 thousand subscribers. And co-creators, for whatever reason, has uploaded many of these different videos. So this one here, Telekinesis, this was uploaded uh, 13 August 2015. And uh, it starts off by saying, I have telekinetic powers. I easily move objects with my mind. Reality obeys my thoughts. Objects obey my thoughts. I can lift up cars with my thoughts. I can move people with my thoughts. I can rearrange matter with my thoughts. And it says credits, disclaimer, to Judge Hutton. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. To George, George, George Hutton. Really? Okay. So, mindpersuasion.com, disclaimer, Credits to George Hutton. This is really interesting stuff. And there are all these different videos. Self-acknowledgement, Einstein brain, OCD relief, non-needy. There's another video. Faith belief, social safety, instantaneous personal connection, absolute condition, wealthy speaker, friendship generator, social intelligence, natural singer, Gold getter, comebacks, relentless ambition, ego killer, affirmation accelerator, early riser, positive thinking, genius copywriter, instant rapport, Da Vinci effect, love, social charisma, forgive your parents, unforgettable, celebrity beauty, natural artist, healthy cholesterol, verbal 
skill boost, scientist, world famous actor, peak human, age reversal, DNA activation, go getter, the power of now, rich, powerful, win every competent, win every competition is what I meant. Real estate riches, money intelligence, spiritual cleansing, pure theta, high generator. Check this out. When you click on high generator, it says right here. It says deep delta to create HGH, muscle recovery, immune boost, pain relief. And again, disclaimer, credit goes to George Hutton. Then there's gamma, gamma's 40 hertz, binaural beats, binaural beats for intense focus, concentration, and cognitive improvement. Then there's infinite efficiency. Then there's math genius, rich blogger, rich as in, you know, wealthy, rich blogger, lucid dreams, verbal ninja. Uh, focus, super speed, superhuman intelligence, psychic power, programming genius, perfect health, musical genius, miracle generator, Loa Turbo, inner peace, infinite skills, income instinct, infinite income, best selling writer, automatic improvement, affirmation supercharger, ace every exam. Uh, Let's see, what else? Third eye chakra, eidetic memory. So many different, and it just goes on. Subliminal visualizations, unstoppable willpower, supernatural power, synchronicity. You click on synchronicity, it says, synchronicity, connect with the superconscious to be where you need to be says tap into the higher power of the universe to be in the right place at the right time. Super conscious connection, super learning. You click on super learning. It says super learning genius, photographic memory, IQ explosion, unlimited intelligence. And again, disclaimer, credit to George Hutton. It says, quote, within you is a natural learner. Develop your photographic memory. Develop unlimited learning power and learn Languages in weeks, complex mathematics in days, and understand the deep physics of reality itself. Unleash your genius upon the world for fun, profit, and mind-mending romance. Download more free mind tools at mindpersuasion.com. Listen, man, I don't know. I don't know who, who George Hutton is. Let's take a look. I've used these subliminals for years now. I've heard that you're only supposed to use them for 15 minutes a day. Don't quote me on any of that. I don't know if that's true. I use them for hours a day for years. Um, I'd fall asleep with the headphones on because I, uh, I made myself my own human guinea pig and I experimented on myself. Uh, <clears throat> let me see here. George button. You'd think I would have sourced it by now. I just never did. George Hutton, Mind Persuasion. Okay, so here goes Mind Persuasion. Yeah, that's right. I used these subliminals for years and I never even sourced the information. Oh, he's a certified hypnotist, author and scientist. Says, quote, I received a BS in physics in 1990 It goes on to say that he managed a research and development laboratory for a biomedical company for 10 years. And then it says, quote, I've been involved in cells, persuasion, and hypnosis. He also says he's been teaching, coaching, and creating hypnosis and NLP-based products for over a decade. Quote, this is mind persuasion. This site is dedicated to NLP hypnosis and influence. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Free mind tools. Free mind tools. Isn't that interesting? He 
He's a certified hypnotist, author, and scientist. That's incredible. That's 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 really interesting stuff. You guys following me here, man? You know where I'm going with this? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying without saying? You know what I'm implying? Are you reading between the lines? So these these tools have been out here. They've been out here. And I don't I didn't see anything about government background. But you know, these types of programs, I don't know, man. I don't I don't know who's behind any of this stuff. All I know is that it's out here and it's been on the web. I've used it for years. 